I am the founder of the Family Foraging Kitchen. We launched a new project this year called Our Grandparents' Secrets and there are many strings to this project but primarily we have an ageing population in Great Britain and there are more ageing people than there are younger people and the problems that they're facing is that they feel devalued in their community, they feel isolated and they don't know how to mix with younger generations. Um, another thing that came up was that um, in later life they retire but they're still able and they would still like to make a form of income um, but they find it really difficult to get back into the workplace because of their age. And so we created this project so that we could offer people who had skills, traditional heritage crafts, um, make do and mend skills, um, wisdoms and tips that they could pass on to younger generations. We created a platform where they could come in and be employed by us and teach their courses, either to their peers um, or to younger generations. So the other side of this project is that it really is a gift to children and young people within communities. Our Grandparents Secrets is creating lots of different courses run by people who are 50 plus and younger people such as myself for the benefit of children today. Um, not only are we doing courses but I'm writing a book um, where I am interviewing people who are uh, age 50 plus and hearing about their wonderful life stories and about their crafts and their skills. I run a company called The Whitlin in Watsits. I upcycle things, um, turn other people's rubbish into hopefully beautiful things to um, make a living from. There's only one way that we can go and that is being resourceful with the things that we already have. So it's got to be because there is n there's only a finite amount of stuff that we know of and that we've got to make the best of it. So if we can reuse it by turning it into something else, art or whatever, it uh, gives extra uh, uses to the resources that we've got. It's self-taught in the fact of using something like YouTube for the techniques and the, obviously the practice comes down to repetition. And when I'm sitting carving it's like I go into a meditative state if you like. It's, it's, uh, well you'll see when, later when I'm carving them, it's very therapeutic in that sense so it's very, very good. After you've practiced it for a few times, it becomes a feeling rather than a, than a looking in and thinking about. When I'm at market stores or at a festival selling my wares, the, the interaction with people is amazing. I met some, some really interesting and beautiful people doing that. I'm in this workshop most of the week on my own, just me and the dog. And so having that interaction and that interface with other people is the yin to the yang, if you know what I mean. It gives the contrast to my life, which is uh, is what's needed, I feel. Especially when you, because when you make something, you're not always sure if it's any good or not. So you, it's a bit of an ego boost to say, oh yeah, that's really good. And I think people that are artists or, or creatives, um, or even music, we need that reassurance that what we're doing is worthwhile. I'm one of the directors of the CIC for the Family Foraging Kitchen and I'm also one of the tutors here. I teach a variety of skills, stonewalling, coppicing, hedge laying, beekeeping, skep making. I've been landscaping for the last 20 years, so just recently gave up the landscaping and I'm going to be going back into doing a little bit more teaching, obviously here at the field and increasing the course base so that we can have a wider diversity of courses. It's a wide range of people really. Um, I've tutored uh, 18, 20 year olds, I've tutored 60 year olds, I've tutored 80 year olds. So the, the knowledge base that I have is equally distributed throughout the age range of people. So you might have young people that suddenly think, I've never seen that done before. I'd like to watch that, I'd like to do that, I'd like to have a try. And the same way is you've got people that are retiring, 70, 80 years old, and they're going, what can I do with my time? I'm bored, I need, to, well, I need to do something. So that's where our skills come through. And for them, it's getting interaction with other people where they may be sat at home doing nothing all their week, and suddenly they've got something to get up for in the morning. It makes a big difference. They're isolated, a lot of elderly people are isolated and these projects that we do, we, we then give the skills for other people to be able to talk to these elderly people. Most of my uh, natural skills were shown to me by my grandfather who was a farm labourer here locally on the Rain Peninsula 
and at the age of eight I was hoeing rows of turnips and building stone walls before and after school. So a lot of the natural um, skills, countryside skills, he taught me. My love of the countryside, I'm passing on to my grandchildren. I passed it on to my daughter. As you see now that she's got this wonderful, wonderful love of the countryside. And, um, and that's the skills that I'd like to pass on to my grandchildren. And basically anybody else that will listen to me. For me, making mend is something that is really, really important. And it's important that our children, our children's children, learn to make amend because this planet is not going to sustain this digital image, this digital world, for um, whereas natural skills have been around since time immemorial and they'll always be there. So, you know, these traditional skills, they'll never go out of date, they'll always be there and they'll always be able to be made. My day job is I work with long-term unemployed and socially excluded adults. Um, I also sit on the local economic partnership for Cornwall and the Isles of Scilly, so quite a high-powered, high-profile job. Um, to relax, I do huge amounts of crafts. Um, my, the different crafts I do, I um, fully range from, I do knitting, sewing, crochet, embroidery, um, all different types of embroidery. Um, I also do bag making, toy making, um, stained glass windows, um, really there's nothing I can't do. Um, my, my daughter um, has learnt some of those crafts from me, but she also is a, she's an artist, so between us we cover the broadest range of art and crafts. My mum taught me, my mum's an older mum, and she taught me how to sew, to crochet, how to knit at a very, very early age, and how to do embroidery. And I was brought up in a household where my mum told me, um, if you can read a book, you can do anything. We always made things, absolutely always made things, which is brilliant. And then over the years, when I've been short of money, I've made things to, when my daughter was little, I was working for an American company making do crochet, um, or I made rag dolls, or I made, one year when I was a child, I made 200 wombles, um, just to make a little bit of extra money for the family. I find crafts very good for mental health generally and I know that if I'm not feeling right I don't create so that's my trigger point to actually you know go for a walk think about something different go and get the fabrics out or get the knitting out and then I know that once I've got doing that it helps me to uh, recover mentally and uh, cheer up a bit. A couple of things that have changed I think because um, it's a really good thing that people understand the problems with mental health and anxiety and loneliness and in the past, people may, know, may not have understood the problems related with it. And arts, crafts, and just being with other people, trying new things can help overcome those. Just in the last year, my daughter set up an amazing creative art studio. And the whole idea is to try and share arts and crafts. And that might be to help with mindful, mindfulness or help with um, just teaching people how to crochet or to how, to, how to sew. So when we had an open day a few weeks ago, I, uh, I taught three ladies how to crochet. There's a cyclical thing I find with it. When I first moved to Plymouth, when I first got married when I was 17, I moved to Plymouth and knitting and crochet and sewing was out of fashion, but I'd been brought up to do it and it became popular. And then when my daughter was born, I was doing knitting, crochet, sewing. She, she was brought up with it again. And I now know with my grandchildren, it's fashionable again. So you know, everybody's making or quilting or doing things. Very often you'll see myself, my mother-in-law, and my daughter, and we'll all be making things. And then Rosie will have the grandchildren here as well. And you'll, you'll see four generations of one family creating at the same time, which is just amazing.